Hey guys, I'm the Size here. Welcome back to Let's Play Minecraft. It's better together. Look out for the scripts in the water. They are evil. Some morons tried to let them squirt gasoline in children, but now they are transformed into brain eating squirts. They think that by eating brains, they will get smarter. And right now they are so hungry, they could eat an octorok. Actually, you don't have to be afraid. When I look into your eyes, I see straight through to the back of your head. Yep, there's Gladfosh insulting us in the usual manner. This is possibly one of the toughest challenges of the entire map, if you ask me. Uh, one character has to control these pressure plates, which moves the gold blocks in and out of the wall over there. You need to stand on this first one to bring out some blocks over there whilst your other character jumps up on top. And then the third one, you need to time it right and get onto the third one, because they need to jump off the block they stood on into the wall cavity then they can jump through this little gap. What they need to do is get on top of that little platform that Mag's just uh, kind of hiding behind right now. They don't need to go under it, so you need to be on one of the pressure plates where that golden block you were stood on is actually up. If you hit the second pressure plate here then you can drop it down and they can get back on top. And you'll need to do that if they fall. So basically you want to get them on top of that little platform. Mag takes a couple of tries to get up there. And then hit pressure plate 1 and then they can get onto this golden block at the end and then they, they need to time their jump perfectly so they end up on top of those two as you step onto pressure plate two and then they can get onto this like really tall platform in the center here so we were struggling for ages to do this the final one is a bit a bit strange because you, you, their character you have to get them over there by standing on the right pressure plate and there's actually another one like on the floor where Mag, Mag stood I didn't even you can't even see it from my angle so you have to open that one by hitting pressure plate one and letting them drop down and then they can get through to this little chamber with the glass front here, hit the lever which will then activate the bridge on the right hand side and I thought there would, there would be a quick way out kind of like uh, you get in the hard way and you have to go out the quick way so I just kind of zoomed off and then had to go back and let mag out so basically just use the right combination of uh, plates again get them across if they're on here and they don't want to bust their legs you can kind of stand on another plate to let them drop down a little bit and then plate two to let them through here I think plate three then to let them through the last hole and then you, we can uh, just uh, dash off together and see what else this horrible facility has got to offer us so we finally escaped that horrible puzzle didn't get killed by any squids for some reason squids aren't spawning up at all on this uh, on the server so we've got another huge pair of ladders to climb up. For some reason I always pick the left ladder to climb up. I don't know when Mag starts setting fire to things, but eventually he gets the flint and tinder out and just starts setting fire to everything. So, on to the next challenge. Down these little chutes, parachutes, and there's a, a bed in every single, start of every single level that you can set your spawn point at. Try to search the right way to the end. Actually, it would be better to do some soul searching. You might just find one. This is basically a huge maze um, with doors in it. It took me a while to realise that I could actually look over the edge and guide Mag around. So at the start, Mag was telling me when to open doors and he was just kind of feeling his way through the maze. <laughs> we didn't get very far, but then I, I just suddenly realised I could show him the way by looking down at the maze. So I started giving him directions and opening doors for him. It took us absolutely ages to complete this challenge, mainly because Mag lags out a bit every time I open the door, so sometimes I had to spam the, the button at the top here quite a few times to make it work. And um, obviously you have to do a lot of running around even if you're at the top there. I think now I start spamming the button, I'm fed up, I'm just going like, to hold the, the door open if I can. Um, basically eventually you'll get to the room, the little chamber just right down here, there's a lever in there. Um, which opens the door, so that was a relief knowing that I finally got him in there and I figured right time to get him out again I'll start opening the doors for him but I was wrong, there's a, a quick way out and the magazine kind of popped up here and I scared the heck out of me and I was like okay there's a quick way out is there secret exits for the win kind of thing which I declare right here I think no I just asked him if there was one so yeah and then just head around the maze and exit onto the next level simple stuff really this challenges with the mazes I've, I've never liked mazes in all my life and uh, as soon as you get mpegs as a challenge in one of these custom maps you know you're kinda doomed 
I'm strafing here because I'm eating a burger at that particular moment in time. I had a burger in front of me, I was dipping it in ketchup and uh, enjoying my, my dinner whilst we were playing this. It was very yummy. So Mag's slowly catching up with me as we head on to the next level, due to Philly. Task 4. You're doing so well, even though you are such an ignoramus. But don't worry, I like you. People say I've got no taste, but I like you. So this is the beginning of some of the really harder jumping puzzles. Obviously the difficult thing about jumping puzzles in this is the fact that you're playing on a server and sometimes the server can lag out and make you lose jumps. So we managed to get all the way across. I think there was a stage in the middle where one of us forgot that we had to jump. We jumped onto the gold block and uh, I think it's this one. Mag jumps onto the gold block and then stops and he's waiting for me to jump onto the next one. I'm like, um, I need to step onto the pressure plate to bring my next gold block out, friend. Um, I'm like, oi, <laughs> oi, jump, move. <laughs> and he's like, hello, I can see you. And then he suddenly realises that he's got to jump onto the next pressure plate. So it's quite tricky. I mean, you have to take two jumps at a time getting across here. If you fall down, basically have to start right again from the beginning, which is a pain. I think we managed to do this almost once. We got to the last block and I fell off, or Mag fell off. I can't remember, but um, this time Mag managed to get to the finish and um, I fell off. So he threw down some TNT for me, uh, so I could get up, and that kind of that's kind of where things went a bit sour. Mag now has TNT in his inventory. He has a flint and steel, so if any of the puzzles um, kind of get on his last nerve, then uh, they kind of get blown up from here on in. It doesn't happen too much. We don't abuse it too much. We try and do our best to solve puzzles, but uh, yeah, there is TNT now. TNT and lighters never go well together. Ah, uh, test room number five. In this test you'll have to run pretty fast. I bet you're too slow. I wonder if you will run faster if I throw a stick. So we both realised that we're running out of food. I can't remember if this map was made when there was food in the game. So we're both dying, so we both try it a couple of times. You've got to stand on the pressure plates on each side of the room and then run across these gold platforms. Mag's got the TNT, not the TNT, he's got the lighter, so he sets his wool on fire. I punched mine out to save us doing it twice. Uh, the door is now open because we both stand on the pressure plates behind, but now you have to get to the door, which is uh, basically another running, jumping challenge. Kind of just come back here stand on the pairs of pressure plates and uh, kind of run halfway across the gold blocks into the center. I think now we've both got golden apples in our inventory as well so we don't die but again this is another tricky jumping puzzle but quite luckily for us the gold blocks glitched out and they kind of stayed out so we kind of had an infinite number of chances we could just climb back up and go onto the gold blocks and take our time we didn't have to worry about uh, falling off. There's Mag with his laggy jumping. If you do sprint jumps off of these you can actually get quite a nice jump. This one is probably not, not a good idea to sprint jump but this one definitely just to make sure you get it and then on to the next challenge. Is it now? Do we start breaking the glass now? I know at some point we start punching through the glass out of boredom in these little lift turbine things. I'm declaring how pro we are at this point. That's my lucky number. I'll guess you will be unlucky then. I'm not trying to be mean, I'm just testing your social resilience. And sarcasm is just one more service we offer. So this is a, a very interesting puzzle. We kind of break it from the start. I noticed there was wool on the ceiling, so we decided to try and set fire to it. But I don't think that was the goal. But setting fire to it kind of led us over here. We suddenly realised that there's another little section over here. And you kind of... Two pressure plates. Two players. So we managed to get over here, and these pressure plates activate the water on both sides of the room. Now on the other side of the room there's a pressure plate with a pair of pistons. You can get to it up here if you use the pressure plate here, which ours was broken so we kind of had to cheat a little bit. So one player would stand up here, move the pistons so the water flowed down the other route. After, you'd only do that after the first, this <laughs> Okay, this is confusing me now. Um, 
one player has to go up the little water stream like we both do here into the second little room and then once you're up here the other player has to stand on the piston in the first room we were in whilst the second player stands on this piston so the second water flow can flow and like uh, obsidianize all the the lava down here so we can both get across now this next bit of the puzzle took us ages to figure out there are a pair of pressure plates one above where I'm stood here and the other one on the other side of the room and we didn't spot them for what seemed like absolutely ages but as soon as we did it was kind of obvious what we had to do so it was quite a tricky puzzle mainly because the, the first piston broke and um, we kind of didn't have a clue what we were doing after that. If the first piston hadn't broke we might have figured it out a little bit easier but still those pressure, two second pressure plates were fairly well hidden here Mag's taking his anger out on a, a cobweb he got caught in it. Cobwebs everywhere in here, so it's like this is like the fairly unused portion of the facility. This is it. This is where Mag starts setting fire to the facility. I think he's angry with it. Angry how, how difficult that last challenge was to us because the pistons broke. So we start setting fire to things now. I think we decided that we we're only going to set fire to things that we'd already passed. If things were still to come, then we were going to leave them as they were. So, more pistony elevators and on to the next challenge. If you're feeling a bit odd, it's possibly caused by the invisible lasers we are firing at you right now. We don't want to hurt you, we just want to see what's inside of you. This puzzle Mag wasn't looking forward to. I'm assuming he's seen most of the puzzles on this game before, but couldn't remember how to solve them. Basically you start it off by standing on these two pressure plates, a little minecart comes out and starts going round in a loop and the buttons on each side have kind of, kind of got to be pressed in order to let the pressure plate, to let the minecart move on to the next section of the, the course which isn't easy, I found the first part was quite easy, I kind of hit it once, hit it twice and then kind of figured out, ah that's what I've got to do so I was like okay, hit it hit once, hit twice and it got onto the second part quite easily and then I just did the same thing again for the little bit to get it onto the other side of the course and that kind of worked fairly well. Although it was this side we had the most trouble with. After a bit of clicking and trying to figure out you know how fast we had to do it and trying to get the timing we decided that the best thing to do was just to spam the buttons so we each picked a pair of buttons and just spammed away and finally somehow through some magical I don't know what car ended up over here and again two pressure plates kind of accepts the cart or something opens the door and we're free to go on to the next challenge so yeah that was a, a very tricky puzzle but if all else fails just spam the buttons and uh, try not to bust them off the wall everything will be fine just spam buttons that's my advice for these these levels like those I've got buttons just spam them I want to play a game what do you think of Wipeout? Be careful though, some subjects left this chamber with some ugly scars. Believe me, those won't go away. A scar never changes. Now let me turn off the part of my brain that gives a damn. We both activated this using the pressure plates and stood in awe. We... I don't think either of us kind of wanted to try and attempt this, but luckily for us, <laughs> all the pistons glitched out again. We will try to activate them again to see if we could start them moving. Um, so we just decided, hell with it. That's the way it's uh, that's the way it's going. So I think Mag took the the wet route and just went straight down the middle. I picked up a piece of wool, I think, and used it to leap over the first hurdle, and then tried to complete the rest of it like officially. But with the pistons moving, I'm I'm assuming you could just run through them. It's designed so you just run in a straight line. You don't have to do too much dodging or time, and just keep yourself moving. But even though I did manage to get all that way, I kind of lagged out right at the last minute and fell off, so I used my last piece of wool to activate this. So, Mag uses the TNT, sadly, to climb up. Um, I think he sets it on fire. He does set it on fire. So, we kind of open the doors and then make a, a run for it. And he's like, run, Dave, run! Don't stop, just run! So, uh, yep, yeah, this is... Yep. Yeah. Mag obviously didn't like that challenge, the fact that it bugged out annoyed him somewhat. And I'm stood here, stuck in a cobweb, with TNT blowing up in my face. Kind of worried about it. I think Mag's going back to inspect the damage, I think. 
So I decide, meh, we'll just go on to the next challenge. I'll wait for him up here. So I think he slowly comes back. Here he is. Hello, Mag. And here we go. I think this is it. Nope. Next one. Next challenge. Don't drink the blue liquid in the next test room, please. Even though it looks like water, it's actually the booster found in chemical toilets. Since we have no toilets, some subjects emptied their bladder and left their feces in it, which caused a terrible stench. This is one of the, I think this is the second case of one of these little easter eggs you've got. It's like Portal, you've got the strange little room where someone was hiding out from the tests. Uh, little signs on the wall, these mad ravings and things. There's a lot of easter eggs in this game. Now, to begin this puzzle, you have to go to the far end of the room on the right, and uh, you activate the water flow through that little double pressure plate thing. One player has to climb up to the top and activate more pressure plates to make water fall down from the ceiling whilst the other player kind of jumps from pillar to pillar using the water to help them get across. We didn't activate the water when we started, this is actually after we finished, but Mag showed his pro jumping skills. I was standing on the pressure plates trying to help him across, wondering what I was doing. And Mag's just amazingly doing this leaping from block to block. He did this entire thing in one shot. This is his first attempt, all the way across, completed it without any water. I was so impressed with him. Especially when he was being so terrible at jumping earlier on. He completely redeemed himself at this point here. So that opened the doors for us. We didn't have to activate the water. And um, we quite merrily went on to the next challenge after that. I'm pretty sure that's not how you're supposed to do it. I'm assuming this game was intended to run before sprinting was added into the game. So we just head on to the next challenge quite merrily. Mag setting himself on fire there. Ah, number 10 is too big for my screen. We gotta move to the test rooms with the bigger screens. So if you can even call this a challenge room, it's not really a test at all. It's just a case of Gladfosh didn't really realise that they were up to level 10 and uh, his screen wasn't big enough. So you kind of get a fairly easy challenge here. This is where it started. Every time after this, me and Mag have a challenge and kind of bust uh, open as many glass windows better. as we can. The next test has a lot of boutons. Don't search for the bouton that calls for help, because it isn't there. So Mag's just running in, spamming the buttons, hoping that would work. Not this time, not really. One player has to go up to the top. There's a huge glass viewing area. You can view down into the box in the centre of the room. The other player has to press the buttons, whilst the first the player on top can read out the kind of combination code to open the door. I'm assuming it'll be the same every single time. I don't see why it wouldn't be. So if you want to cheat and use this, then go ahead. You don't have to do this. You just run across. So then basically you just head down. One of the player punches in the combination. Fairly simple. So especially after all the jumping puzzles we've just been through. This kind of thinking puzzle was quite a relief. There wasn't too much speed involved or anything. No timing. Just basically figuring out a puzzle. Remembering... A combination which I wrote in the text so I wouldn't forget it and uh, punching in the code very easy compared to what we were doing before so that's it for this episode I'll see you in the next one where we'll do the next couple of tests till then take care see you soon